Oh, hey. Hey, it's Rob again. Really? All right. Come on. You're going to be right back in. Oh, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I'm in the kitchen today. Got some meat that I want to try and uh, prepare for cooking later and then freeze so that I have some for later. So Rob got some nice uh, beef ribs, some nicely marbled beef ribs in there, although I'm pretty sure that one in the end that's covered by the label isn't quite as nice as the others. Uh, got some bacon-wrapped bacon -wrapped, uh, loin here. Nice ribeye. I was very happy to see this one. And then another uh, loin filet. And these need to be cooked soon or, you know, put in the freezer. I have a little selection of some rubs here that I'm going to use. I've got a uh, jalapeno garlic. It's a black rub. I think that's kind of interesting. I've had these that I've got for a while. It's a steak rub and then a spicy Tokyo rub. This one, you know, smoky honey habanero like that and then just your basic salt pepper garlic mix um, that pretty much works every time so we're going to go with the uh, beef short ribs um, they are pretty well marbled i like that and i'm going to be using this uh, smoky honey habanero rub and this tastes really good i just had a little bit and uh, really good mix of flavor that's exactly what it says it is it's smoky honey habanero um, and all those flavor profiles hit at slightly different times. It's quite good. All right, the ribs are done. What I'm doing now is laying down some uh, salt, pepper, garlic mix. Uh, just because I know that's a good base that will help to uh, pull the moisture out of the meat and spice it up and uh, give it a little more flavor. And I'm going to add some of the Jolly Roger jalapeno garlic. And go pretty generous with that so it'll pick up some of that flavor. And because I'm going to be putting these in, freezer, or in uh, vacuum bags, I'm going to need to pull these sticks out and still maintain the shape. So we'll see how that goes. What's the problem, Poopa? Are you upset that I'm not giving you steak? Hmm? Is that it? Yeah? You want to smell? Yeah, I know. That's what you like. Yeah, you would really like some, wouldn't you? Yeah. Maybe we'll have something later. <laughs> That is definitely a, uh, <laughs> definitely a rub. <laughs> All right, the next one is this uh, beef loin, a little uh, tenderloin filet. So uh, I've got the salt, pepper, garlic mix, and then I'm going to add some of the, uh, some of the steak rub. And this is a little bit tougher piece of meat. I'll loosen it up a little. Yeah, I did the uh, salt, pepper, garlic mix and added the smoky garlic habanero. Uh, my oven has hit my preheat heat. I, uh, I have the short ribs in the oven right now. We're on 240 degrees Fahrenheit and um, I'm going to leave them in there for 
several hours. <clears throat> and this time we have the ribeye. I, it's a prime ribeye, and it feels very nice. And I'm bone in. I mean, it's a. Uh, this feels like a good steak for a celebration of some sort. So, set it up. Put it with the rub. We work it in there. And that, <clears throat> that one is now ready. Uh, I'm creating some bags uh, to pre fill. And just by, uh, I just wanted to show you how I do these. I'm going to set it up at the edge. Make sure that our sealing is doubled and we're on, well, I guess it doesn't matter. And then I just got a manual seal button and let it sit for, I don't know, about a minute. This little thing will count down and then it'll click and let me know when it's done. Isn't this exciting? It's cold enough that the dogs are playing the inside-outside game. And that was the click. It means I can release it. And then I've got a nicely sealed bottom. And pull this down to the size that I want. Blow my knife across. And there, I have a bag. And I like to turn these... Turn these inside out to leave this cuff. And what this does is when you put anything in here, if anything gets on these sides, it won't get on the ceiling surface side. So, for instance, I'll take one of these, put it in here. Now, some of these bags, there's a uh, textured side and a flat side. I like to put the texture side down against the heater bar. That way it has a tendency to heat up a little bit more. And it helps improve the seal. And there we go. Now, the nice thing about these is um, I'm going to leave these in the refrigerator for a few days. And what this will do is it's, it's a process called wet aging, where because I've got the spices on here, it will help pull the juices out and get that flavor and then go back into the meat. So the meat will become flavored all the way through. Then I can put these in the freezer and these will freeze and last for quite a while, at least a year, um, probably longer. Uh, the vacuum bag also makes these ready for sous vide right away. So if I want to cook them sous vide, I can just, I can take them directly out of the freezer into the sous vide bath and just let it go for a little bit longer and they will cook perfectly. And of course this one needs the bigger bag. There we go. And of course, the final part of this is to make sure that they are all labeled. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have put stuff in the freezer thinking, oh, I'll remember what this is. And then when I finally look at it, I have no idea.